In the era of the explosion of consciousness that happened in 67, and uh, I was already involved since 65 in that uh, alternative consciousness known as the hippies in San Francisco. And so I grew up in that and in the music and what was going on, the explosion of consciousness. And then in 69, end of the summer of 69, the bubble burst and somehow the magic was lost due to a number of unfortunate events. And at that time, then I decided to see the world. And uh, I bought a one-way ticket to Amsterdam and went through Europe, across North Africa, overland to India. And uh, in Kabul, I heard about a place called Goa. I met a guy who was on his way there to see Eight Finger Eddie. So I went with him. And in, in that process of going over land to India, I was reading Bhagavad Gita, and already in the 60s I had a spiritual interest, an esoteric interest in many things, in astrology, and tarot, and magic. And so then I, and I played guitar. So I started to write spiritual songs. And then uh, in India, I wrote more, and I became a sadhu, and I lived with a yogi in the Himalayas in the early 70s, 71. And in ha my high meditations, whole songs used to come to me. And I just knew how they went, and all the words, and they had very spiritual words. And then I went to Goa, and near a campfire, I picked up a guitar, and Brun started to play, and got into the meditative consciousness and the music just came through and I saw that the people were uh, affected in a very positive way and through music I could take them to a high state of consciousness with these songs. So that was when I discovered about this concept and then I have been refining it since many decades, first with acoustic guitar on a, by a campfire on the beach in Goa, then we got electric equipment and made bands. Other people were involved in the band, so it wasn't as pure as when you do it alone. And then I was DJing also, and after I DJed, and then the first electronic music started to come in the early 80s from Europe, and I got turned on to that, and then... The, and then I went on with that, and it just all, over time, became what it is today. First it was just people sitting around a campfire on the beach playing guitars like it might be anywhere. Then there was first parties, was with DJing, I made some parties, but also we had bands and made live music, but it was still not electronic music yet. It was still the music of the 60s in San Francisco and all this. And Jimi Hendrix and Grateful Dead and Janis Joplin and Beatles and whatever, you know, Santana. And sometime even John Coltrane thrown in or any kind of thing. I had a big collection. I just used to make a story with the whole night like how I do now. But it was any kind of music from before. Then when electronic music came in, I saw it was something I'd never heard before because I'd kind of heard everything. And then I kind of went with that because it was very interesting for me. And I left all the other behind. And now it's many decades later because that was in the early 80s, early mid 80s. I mean, for me, it was an evolution because I lived that evolution. So, but other people might not see the connection. When I used to do some interviews in the 90s and all that, and in the early 2000s, but it was more in the 90s, early 90s, I came up with all these things like redefining the ancient tribal ritual for the 21st century and all these slogans. And one of the things I used to say was, we are the missing link between the 60s and the 90s. 
But now it's like we are the missing link between the 60s and the 21st century. <laughs> so me, I lived that evolution, but not everyone would see it because to them it seems like two different scenes. But for me, it was all just the evolution of music and consciousness and lifestyle that went on, you know, my whole life. I have my way of looking at this thing, and I have my way of doing this thing, and it's... And because I'm a follower of Lord Shiva and Ma and Guru Dattatreya, and I do my pujas every day and pursue my spiritual practices since many times. It's a li uh, since I'm 18 years old, I took Guru Diksha in India. So now I just turned 67, so it's nearly 50 years or something. And uh, it's a lifelong process, but it purifies as time goes on and gets higher and higher. So because I'm into that, and that's what I basically do, the DJ thing and with the music, I look at it in a different way with what I'm trying to do. And I use the party situation as the way that I worship the universe. And Lord Shiva, I have my altar there, and Guru Maharaj and Ma. <coughs> and all of the tapes for me are like s stairs going like the stairway to heaven, slowly, slowly, through the whole 24 hours, like the stairway to heaven, step by step, track by track. So the, I've often compared it to, so my concept of doing that, and by the end trying to be in contact with some sort of divinity, I've often compared it to uh, Herman Hesse wrote a book called The Glass Bead Game, and, uh, or Magister Ludi, sometimes it's called. And uh, they played in the future a game like this, but with mathematics and, and music and science and art and any kind of thing, and they'd have a panel of people and they would say equations that met from any kind of, of these disciplines. And step by step, they would reach also the divine. It was almost like a religion in this book. So that's the closest thing I could compare what my concept of doing with the DJ and party situation is. <laughs> booked to play in Switzerland. I played in Switzerland a number of times. I used to go in Switzerland every year. And then one guy booked me, from a, and he was from a village near where Albert Hoffman's village was. And they made the party in a forest for Swiss Independence Day. It was August 1st, 2000. The forest happened to be behind Albert Hoffman's house, like a big forest. You know, I mean, he, he, it's not right behind his house. It's inside the forest that's behind his house. And he used to go walking in that forest often. He loved that forest. One of the guys who was a friend of the guys who organized my party was also the publisher of Albert Hoffman's books and also his kind of personal secretary or personal assistant. And he was at the party. And he had a stall there and everything. And he was very involved in parties in Switzerland in those days. He still has the publishing house. I saw him last summer when I was in Switzerland. Anyway, the party was going on all night. And then in the morning, there was some talk that he might go and bring Albert to the party. And in the morning, he came and told me, I'm going to go and bring Albert now. And he went to Albert's house, you know, driving or whatever. And then he got Albert and brought him there to the party. And then he brought him in the DJ booth. And he saw the party a little bit and very nice and whatever. We talked a little bit. And then they left. He didn't stay that long. But the next year again, in two, August 1st, 2001, <coughs> There was the party again in the forest. And that year, Roger in the morning said, I'm going to get Albert. And he went and brought Albert. And Albert must have hung out two, three hours at the party. 
he came in the DJ booth. That's when that video clip is from that's on the internet. He came in the DJ booth, we talked, it was like seeing each other again, it was almost like we were old friends. I asked him, how old are you? He told me like 96 or something. Uh, I said, oh wow. And he's saying, how old are you? I, he said, I, I, maybe at the time I was like 50 or something or 55. And he's saying, oh, you're very young. My son is 65 or something, you know what I mean? And he was really nice and whatever. And then after that, he went around the party. He was sitting over on the bench, talking to all the people, like on the edge of the dance floor. And people were getting autographs from him and photos. And he was hanging out there. My friends were there with him and stuff, too. And it was nice. He enjoyed. And then they went back. Uh, and, then, uh, in, and then when he was 100 years old, after that, what happened was the guy who used to organize all those parties in Switzerland, two of the girls who organized my parties in San Francisco came for the party in Switzerland. And then he, they fell in love with one of them, and he ended up going back to San Francisco. And he, still, he DJs there, and he still lives there today in San Francisco. So then I didn't go to Switzerland so much after anymore. But when he was 100 years old, Albert Hoffman, they contacted me and wanted me to come and play for his birthday party. There was going to be a big symposium uh, for celebrating his 100th birthday very in Basel at the at the, uh, you know, Mesa, they call it, like the main hall, whatever, of the town. And, uh, and then it was several days, like a whole weekend, and then the last night there was a birthday party. He had just had a hip replacement. It was on crutches, and, and so he didn't make it to the actual birthday party, but it went on, and we played there. And then that was the last time I was in Switzerland, maybe till last summer. Somehow I didn't go there anymore. But yeah, he was a great man, very great man. I have no idea. Everything is up to the will of Guru Maharaj. Who knows how long I'll even be here. You, you know, you can't count on anything. I mean, as long as I'm here, I plan to just keep going on the way I've been going. Now I have Kumbha Mela again in J January in India. And I have that, all those kind of things going on. And then every year I have my certain tour that I do. And I have that going on. And from time to time, a new CD. And uh, I just continue. And I do all my practices every day and all that. And then time just passes, working out karma. And one day, everything has to end. And I will leave this body and go where I have to go. But for now, as long as Guru Maharaj and Lord Shiva and Ma will me, I am here and I will do what I've been doing. Have a good time, everybody. I wish you a happy life. Most important thing in life is to be happy. So you got to work on that. So I hope to see you on the party and uh, wishing you all the best. May the light of love shine in your hearts and in your minds, and may you always walk in peace. Om Namah Shivaya. Harada Mahadev. Om Namah Narayan. Om Namah Narayan.